I am Lisbeth Borg Divart, and I'm the founder of Nordic Education Center for Dog Trainers. I'm going to share a PowerPoint today as well. I'm going to talk about the use of treats um, because a lot of people are asking about how and when we should use treats and so on. The reason why I want to talk about treats is that um, we use it a lot. And there is some confusion about this. And uh, well, yeah, I, I think it's confusion because our students, they are asking questions about this because they hear um, different things from different trainers. And that is okay. That is always okay. And that's how it should be and will always be that we all have different opinions. So that's why I want to talk about how we at Nordic Dog Trainer believe that treats is, should be used for the best kind of use in dog training. I am talking a lot about not using treats because I've seen for the past years that the use of treats has become sometimes a little bit overwhelming. It's all about treats. If you just have enough treats, your dog will do whatever uh, you want him to do, which in some cases are, are, are right as well, because we are uh, sometimes luring them with treats. And I want to explain to you the difference about luring and using treats when we want to teach new behaviors for dogs. We also use treats when we do counter conditioning sometimes. Uh, and I want to tell you why we do not have to use treats always or as much as we are doing uh, at the moment. So let me find the PowerPoint. Let me uh, remember how I share. Okay, this is how I share. Uh, hold on. It takes a little time. Yes. So treats, um, yeah, where do I start really? <laughs> because when we're going to a course these days, a dog class for some, of some sort, then we are asked to, to take a lot, to bring a lot of treats. Okay, uh, what I, I just realized, what I forgot to add with pictures and so on in this PowerPoint is what kind of treats, but we can talk about that later. But the treats, what I want to talk to you about today is when and how and why and why not we should use treats in some instances. Because today, like I said, it's, it's all about treats and positive dog training. Positive dog training is uh, in many cases misunderstood, I think, uh, with, with only thinking about treats. And if you really want to misunderstand this, which some old fashioned dog trainers really want to do, then they say, you know, we are looked upon in Norway. They actually have a nickname for it, which is not very nice. They call it the treat aunts, you know, like an ant, uh, an aunt, sorry, <laughs> the person, the animal, um, which is also uh, very much geared to being a female using treats instead of the old fashioned, I'm the boss kind of type. Thankfully, the world is, you know, going forward. So um, a lot of men are using treats as well. And we know that this has nothing to do with gender or anything. Um, so that that's really unnecessary to bully people like that. On the other hand, I have to agree that if you just watch or observe some uh, dog classes. You can kind of re think why people are, are saying these kind of things, not, not the bad things, but why the look of, of the owner is a, like a treat machine, you know, like a robot just giving the dog treats because they're, like I said, there's a lot of treats being used. And I'm not sure if everyone really knows why they're giving the treats or when they should give the treats. So we need to, to know that we have a purpose of training with treats, yeah? And the purpose is to teach the dog a new behavior. 
dogs cannot talk and they don't understand what we are trying to explain to them. So if you want them to teach, if you want to teach a dog a new behavior, we can use treats, but we should also, as soon as the dog knows the behavior, we can stop using the treats so we do not get dependent on the street, on the treats. This picture, what I did for this PowerPoint is that I, I use uh, yeah, online pictures from a program called Canva. Um, and when I uh, search, use the search engine, engine and, and, and wrote dogs and treats, these are the pictures that typically came up. And this is also a, a very typical thing that we, we want to use the treats when we ask the dog to do something. I'm not saying that this is something I would train my dog to do, to give the paw like that. It's just an illustration. I know I'm saying this because a lot of the times, you know, <laughs> uh, we are talking about the dog language and so on. So um, lifting a paw is a calming signal. So it might not be a very good idea to, to teach the typical calming signals as some a behavior a dog has to do in order to get a treat. But this is what we do. And this is typically what we should not do if we want to use the treats right. Because what we are doing here is that we are in fact luring the dog. We're telling the dog that if you do this, you will get this treat. In some instances, we can use it to show the dog just because they don't understand if we are telling them to go right or to go left or to do a certain behavior, to turn around or to come back to you, whatever it is, he or she does not understand what we are telling them in full sentences. So we might have to teach them, like when we're teaching a dog to, uh, for example, take your clothes out of a washing machine, uh, we can use treats. And I just realized that I've used a lot of O's in the association. It's a uh, uh, rising error there. Sorry about that. So the first thing we need to know is that dogs, they learn by association. So when they do something and it's associated with something, preferably then a good thing, then the chance of the dog doing that behavior one more time is so much higher then if you don't use reward-based training. Science is telling us that as well, many times. If you Google, uh, if you use, um, uh, now I forgot, oh, I should have written it down. I thought I should write it down on the PowerPoint. Google Scholar, Google Scholar. And you type dogs and positive training or dogs and reward-based training, you get a lot of scientific papers up so you can read it yourself. So basically, dogs learn by association. So when another dog barks, <laughs> uh, your dog might start barking too because it sees, oh, he's barking. I'm not sure what he's barking about, but I want to bark too. Um, they don't understand what we try to explain them. Like I said, you know, go right, go left. That's something we have to teach them. And we have to uh, then later on put on a cue so they understand what they're going to do, when they're going to do it. And we use treats or rewards, reward-based training, to get a positive association for what they're doing and to increase the chance that the dog will repeat that behavior because the chances are a lot higher if they get a reward for it. And a lot of dogs, they like treats. They like good things like we do. <laughs> also, what I observe is that for dog owners, it's very easy to give treats. So I think, I suspect that we humans use more treats than necessary because it's the easiest way for us to reward your dog. 
So positive dog training, is that the same as using a lot of treats? In some, I'm sorry to say, but in some instances, people think so, that if I only use treats, I'm doing positive dog training. But positive dog training is not only about treats. Treats is one of the rewards. It's one kind of reward we can give our dogs when we are training them. Of course, everything is called positive dog training, by the way. You don't want to sign up for a puppy class saying that we use, you know, not positive dog training. <laughs> we use very negative dog training. That would be the opposite. So everything is called positive dog training. So you can risk signing up for a puppy class and they're actually punishing the dog and then giving the dog a treat when it's doing something uh, good. That is not how we are doing it, Nordic dog trainer. Okay, so positive dog training, does that necessarily involve a lot of treats? The answer, my answer is no, not necessarily. The treats is, some, is one of the uh, rewards that we can give our dogs to teach them something. And like I said, science is supporting this uh, because uh, it says uh, it, that dogs are more likely to repeat something if the feedback is positive, doesn't necessarily have to be treats. Also, of course, using um, reward-based dog training is better for the welfare of the dog. That's obvious that uh, being reward-based instead of punishing it, it creates better welfare. And also it lowers stress levels for the dog to use reward-based dog training. However, when we are using treats, many times we're actually increasing the stress level of the dog. And I'll explain why. For example, this is when we are luring the dog. This is when we're telling the dog that if you do something, if you sit or if you something, if you look at me, this is a popular way of training contact, eye contact, which I don't think it's necessary at all. Uh, not only that it's not necessary, it's also not, um, how can I say, it's not very nice to demand that they have to look you into the eyes, uh, stare at you. I mean, we can look our dogs into each eye, to each other's eyes, like a mutual understanding when we're talking to the dog and so on. But to demand that your dog is staring you in the eyes is, it has no use, by the way. And it's not a nice thing to do because staring or looking, looking for a while, which is staring, uh, is also a distance increasing signal a threatening signal in some cases. So anyhow, we have the treat. So if you do this, you get this. And that's very typical that people do. They're very uh, quickly out there with the treat. If you do this, you get this. And in a lot of instances, it's about things like sit or wait uh, for something before you go out the door, before you uh, put the food down, something, wait for something. Uh, and again, I want to say that we also, we always recommend harness, but in this PowerPoint, I've used pictures from the internet, which I'm allowed to use these pictures. Uh, so the most dogs are wearing uh, colors on these pictures. Uh, also, it's a color which is not attached to leads. So a lot of dogs are wearing colors. Uh, when they're out in the garden or in the house, which is fine as long as it's not connected to a lead. Oh, a lot of dogs are asked to sit and wait for a very long time. So they sit or they stand, whatever they do, but they wait, they wait, wait, wait. And you know why this is not good when you want to teach your dog a new behavior? because then you have to give the reward as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible. Preferably, 
within seconds. Actually, even more specifically, three seconds to be, if it's going to be perfect. Uh, a dog is doing a lot of different behaviors. So imagine you're teaching your dog not to uh, jump, for example, or to walk nice on a leash or uh, whatever in these situations when they're moving and they um, do something that you want them to do and you want to reward them for that. If you're waiting too long, you they are going to forget why they get the reward. It's going to be the last behavior they did. So if you are using treats when your dog is jumping and you're standing, your dog will jump. First of all, he will jump because you're standing holding the treat and your dog wants to have the treat. And by the time you give the treat, your dog might very well be with all four feet in the air. So your dog has not um, uh, learned not to jump. Maybe you even taught him to jump because he's getting the treat when he's jumping. So if you want to teach your dog a new behavior, you have to give the treat very quickly. Like when we are training the attention sound, we give the sound and then immediately you need to give the treat. I talked about that in one of my earlier uh, Facebook lives as well, that we have to practice being very quickly at giving the uh, reward. However, if you want to, your dog to stop doing a behavior, like stop barking, then you have to wait. Then you should wait, but never, no, not never, but very often, not as long as we are making them wait. In very, very often we are, wait, we are making our dogs wait too long and they get too impatient and there are too many things happening in the environment. They're not able to concentrate for that long. It could be many reasons. Um, but then you wait too long to give the reward. So again, you are rewarding something uh, of the behavior that you maybe not want to reward the instance where your dog starts barking or uh, turn his back against you or something, where you are rewarding what you don't want. And it's a long waiting game for a lot of dogs. Um, when I found these pictures today, I, I, I recognized them from, from my own courses as well, when I observe people and how they are actually making the dog wait and holding the treat in front of the dog. Here is a person who I believe will teach her dog to give him uh, her the paw, show the paw. So the dog is already having the paw in her hand, but the treat is still not given. I am wondering if you can see anything that these pictures have in common, anything. See a lot of uh, nice people with their dogs wanting to give them a treat. And the same thing here. Because this is something that is very, um, what's the word? You can see very well what's happening on these pictures. And I'm going to tell you now what it is. And it's the fact that people are holding their hands higher than the dog. Do you see that? It always goes higher than the dog. Look at all these pictures. There are uh, seven different pictures. Nice ones, they think. <laughs> and it's nice pictures, those. But they're all holding their hands above the dog. And I wonder why, you know, it made me think, why are we doing that? And it, I think it's a connection with the waiting game. Again, if you look at the picture, uh, it's very clearly with the person that's uh, having her breakfast. She's even holding a piece of toast or something uh, above the dog's head. If you want your dog's stress level to rise, this is how you do it. If you want your dog to be more stressed in the situation, do it like this. 
And I'm saying this a bit ironically because we don't want the dog to stress more, do we? We want it to be more calmer. It's unnecessary to raise the stress levels by doing this. When we could have easily hold, uh, held our hands in the dog's um, uh, level, like lower down, preferably a little bit below the face. And I'll show you pictures of that, how you could do it. Now, they say that you should not use pictures of what you don't want people to do. And uh, I am doing that now. I am showing a picture, which I think is really not nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone, but this is not nice. This is not fun for the dog. To have to wait for something you really would like because you appreciate it a lot. I think it's more for the pleasure of the people, of the humans. Oh, look at my dog, he's so good at this. Um, I know this training is used for typically young dogs to increase their um, concentration span. And um, if anything, this is probably making the dog, first of all, the pulse will rise, even though your dog is sitting, the pulse will rise um, and he will be more stressed. So to put something on your, no on your dog's nose like this is, is not something we recommend. I just, I just wanted to add that, to include that into my talk today, because uh, this is some, something that we humans do that we we, we mean well, I think, we mean well, but we don't realize what we're actually doing. Uh, and it's not to the benefit of the dog. And I can see in dog courses or classes as well that people really sometimes try to shove the treat down the throat of the dog. Really, why don't you want the treat? Oh, the treats are not good enough, blah, blah, blah. You know, maybe the treats are more than good enough, but the reason why a dog does not want the treat in that situation is because something else is bothering or stressing him. It could be positive stress. In, uh, it doesn't have to be something bad happening, but it could be, uh, let's say that you come home after work, your dog has been home alone and he's very, very happy to see you. I'm not sure if your dog wants a treat in that situation. Your dog wants maybe to just be touched by you or seen by you, acknowledged that you are there again, being talked to and given the attention to. But in a lot of cases, it's also because we have, uh, there is something bothering the dog. A typical example again is that when we're teaching dogs to pass other dogs, whether you have a dog that is just happy-go-lucky and wants to um, greet other dogs or dogs that are afraid of other dogs. If your dog does not want to take the treat, it is because you're too close to the other dog. And then steak or the best, the best steak won't matter. You know, you can have a kilo of a, the best steak ever but you're still too close, your dog does not want the treat. The only way of um, calming down the situation is to get a, a greater distance to the other dog or to, if you are in a, in a setting with other dogs and your, dogs are too, your dog is too close to one or several of the other dogs that your dog is not feeling comfortable in the situation they're too close and they're too busy trying to cope with the situation and then food is not the first thing on their mind and I compared this before and I can do it again try to think of yourself in a situation where you are very uncomfortable or or scared I can think of a few situations I've been in and like I've always use myself an example I'm not too fond of flying so having a great meal on that flight is not really helping me 
because I'm already scared. So when we use this uh, in situations when we're helping a fearful dog, for example, when we want to help a fearful dog, then treats doesn't necessarily solve the problem. And what is proven also by science is that actually the matter of choice is the best way to solve these problems, a choice. And the choice in the situation should be not to be forced to be too close to the other dog. So if your dog was off leash, if all dogs were off leash, your dog would probably have a much greater distance than you have when you're walking on leash and your dog is reactive, okay? And the choice to be in the situation or to go out of the situation when they are scared, that is what is helping them to, um, to cope. And then when you're coping, you, you get more self-confidence and you get less insecure. So if you are scared of the darkness or if you're scared of spiders, let's take spiders as an example, because uh, we are humans are <laughs> scared of spiders. Many humans, we are very scared of spiders. Um, if you have a choice of how close you want to get to the spider, you actually have a chance to help yourself getting used to being close to the spider. But if someone is pushing you or even worse, coming towards you with the spider, imagine if you then have a choice of running away or going to hide or, you know, stop, don't come closer. You have much more control of the situation than if someone would hold you back in that situation. And that will do nothing good for your, for your fear of spiders. It will actually probably make things even worse because you get another bad association with the spider. And it is the same thing with dogs. So choice to uh, move away uh, or not to greet or whatever uh, the problem might be. So next time when you want to give your dog a treat, because you want to help him to um, change the association with the other dog, that the, the other dogs are not dangerous, and you want to give your dog a treat, and your dog does not want to take the treat, then you're too close. And it's not been anything useful learning for your dog in that situation. Okay. How do we give the treats? <laughs> the thing is that we are used to giving the treats. I don't know why, but we give the treats holding. Normally, we hold it between our uh, fingers like this. And what happens when we hold something like this between our two fingers? Look at these pictures. Look at this picture. It's a beautiful illustration of human actually putting their hand into the mouth of the dog. And when a dog is jumping or when a puppy has very, very sharp teeth, you know what we're doing? We are asking for it. We are actually asking for it. So if you put your hand into the dog's mouth, the dog can't, you know, it's not constantly having his mouth open. He has to chew the toy and he's trying, he's trying to get the toy, especially if you're teasing the dog with a toy or asking the dog still to do the waiting game, you know, and some people are really, uh, they are annoying the dog by coming closer to the nose with the, with the treat. And it, that is not nice behavior, by the way, you know, that's bullying from the human uh, part the side. So watch this carefully, see what you're doing. You are actually putting your hand into the dog's mouth. Not a very smart thing to do. I think if it's your own dog, you kind of know what to expect. But if you're a dog trainer and you never met this dog before, it's not a good idea. It's so much better to just have uh, an open palm 
and leave the one treat in the palm and lower the hand so that your dog does not have to jump or screen or being totally crazy to get the treat. Just hold it there. It makes things so much easier and I can prom I can almost promise you, <laughs> I'm always a little bit afraid of promising too much, but in most instances that I have done this and with my uh, own dogs as well, then they also teach to take the, the treat in a nicer, calmer way. This makes such a big difference. It's like, I, I say this a lot, but it's the small things we do, I believe. It's all the small behaviors that we do that we don't necessarily think about what we're doing. So if you change some of them, uh, it has a very, um, uh, the impact is so much bigger than we think it is. So by just changing your behavior or changing to putting the treat in the palm of your hand, an open hand and lower your hand will reduce the stress level, both in you and your dog. So I tried to take this photo earlier today <laughs> with the cat in the background. So now I was making my cat doing the meet, uh, the waiting game. And I'm sorry about that. I wasn't, I wasn't meant to do that, but I wanted to take a picture for, for this uh, PowerPoint. But one small treat, one treat for, for the behavior. You can, you can use um, several treats. You can use treats several times. But if your, dog's, if your dog has to stop and chew it, it's too big. So, so people ask me, when do you use treats, Lisbeth? And um, I use treats when I teach my dog a new behavior. For example, the contact, the, sorry, the attention sound. I use treats in the beginning and when my dog knows how, what it's supposed to do, then I phase out the use of treats and use less treats and change them to other rewards because dogs in very many in instances, and you should try it with your own dog, try different rewards. There are talking, you can talk nicely to your dog in a nice voice. Um, you can touch your dog. You don't have to talk. Do, try this. Try, you should try this and see what your dog is most responsive to in a positive way. It's also a nice way to observe your dog's calming signals. If you talk to your dog and don't touch it, just talk to him. And if you touch him, don't talk to him. And of course, you can always also, uh, not always, but you can also use toys the problem is with toys is that in many instances it's making the dog more stressed like you know it's just too much for your dog especially if it has to sit and wait for a while and then you go oh come on you know i have a toy and a lot of treats it's like an explosion of something and this is the behavior dog owners are complaining about the dogs are jumping on them and having this kind of explosive behavior so why are we teaching them to do so? We shouldn't. Dogs in general, they have a much better understanding of human language, uh, body language, and our way of behavior than we have of dogs. Um, it's, they think it's because they just, they, because of evolution, the, the, how we lived with our dogs for so many thousands of years, they understand us better than we do them today. Uh, a little curiosity there is also that humans are pretty good at understanding the dog's barking or the voice of the dog, the tone of the voice, the different types of barking. Uh, they did done some studies of that and found that people that don't even own a dog, but just by hearing the different types of barking they are pretty good at guessing what what why the dog is barking if it's scared or if it's a happy bark or if it's a guarding bark and something so we're not all that bad humans but just 
know that your dog, they understand us and they understand certainly other dogs better than we do because they have their own language. They, they know it. So instead of rewarding with treats all the time, think about the possibility that your dog can actually be rewarded by just coping with the situation himself. And now I'm talking about not training in, you know, tension sound or recall or something. But if you want to train a dog that is um, fearful and we want to help him to be less fearful, it's the choice and um, the, the whole situation that is rewarding the dog. This, the reward for the dog is actually to avoid feeling feel, uh, fear. Same thing with us. So you don't have to use a lot of treats and maybe in some instances you should not use treats in this situation. So to sum up, treats is, is a good thing. Of course, it's a good thing used in the right situations and with the right, um, for the right purposes. Like I say, when I have a class, I normally say it's important to reward a dog and you can use the treats when teaching your dog a new behavior. But equally important is to stop using the treats so you don't get dependent on them. Because if you have your treats and you lure your dog, like I showed you some pictures of in the PowerPoint, that when you hold the treats in front of your dog, when you want him to do something, what happens the day you don't have treats with you? If you forget treats or you're out of sausages, so whatever you, you want to give your dog, the dog won't do it. And then he hasn't learned it. He's doing it because you're luring him to. That said, we all need to reward our dogs. I mean, it's, it's nice to know that you're doing the right thing. So don't stop talking to your dog. Don't stop rewarding. But imagine, not imagine, but think about it, that even looking at your dog is a great reward for many dogs. Actually, for a lot of dogs, having the owner's attention is a greater reward than treats. So you need to get to know your dog, not only by what kind of treats does your dog like, but what kind of rewards does your dog really like. And some of you might be surprised that your dog would prefer you talking to him or touching him, like stroking him, uh, giving him a massage or whatever, sit down on the grass and just be with him um, is a much greater reward for the dog than just giving treats all the time. Okay, hope this was useful. And what I want to make you think about it, yeah? And also remember, that if you want to use treats when you're teaching a dog something new, then you need to give them very quickly. Don't wait, don't let your dog wait forever. That's just not nice. <laughs> For what reason? We are doing a lot of, lot of things we do with our dogs. We're doing with the best intentions, but we haven't really thought about what we are actually doing to the dog, I think. Um, and I think that because it's my own experience. It's not like I was born with this knowledge. It's when I was made aware of it that I started thinking that, yeah, maybe it's not a good idea. Okay, so I wish you a very, very nice evening and bye.